Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at accounting for issuing common stocks. This topic is covered in introductory accounting course, intermediate accounting, and of course, the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including many CPA questions if you like my recording please like them share them subscribe put them in playlist if they benefit you it means they might benefit other people follow me on instagram on my website you will find additional resources to supplement your accounting education and add additional points to your cpa exam so you can pass the exam and move on with your life i strongly suggest you check out my website stock certificate and stock transfer in the prior session we talked about a stock certificate and we said each unit represent a stock so if you own one stock of a company one stock that's equal to one share now let's assume the company has 100 shares in total and you happen to own one stock it means you own one over 100 or you own one percent so a stock certificate serves as a proof that a stockholder has purchased a share. So this is how the stocks are used. So in the grand scheme of things, if you happen to own 10 shares of that company, 10 out of 100, you own 10%. And you have ownership of 10%. It means you have voting power of 10% as well. Let's talk about basics of capital stock. You need to be familiar with certain terminology that appear on the balance sheet for the equity section of all companies. Stocks that are authorized, issued, and outstanding. Every time the company prepared their balance sheet, prepared their financial statements, they have to tell you how many shares are authorized. What is this number? Well, think about the word authorized. Authorized to do what? They are authorized to sell them. For example, this company here that we're looking at, they have 250 million shares. So they have 250 million shares that they can issue. Of these shares issued and outstanding, it means they sold them and they sold them to the public. Of the 250, they have 92.5, I'm just gonna round it, point five million shares issued and outstanding. It means the remaining, whatever the remaining is, it's still not yet came to life. It means the remaining shares, whatever, 250 million minus 92.556, the remaining just simply, did, they don't have them yet. Now, now, what else do we need to know? When the company has, when they issue stocks, they might have a par value. For example, the par value here is a penny, 0 0.01 of a stock. Now, what is the par value? We're gonna talk about the par value in a moment, but simply put, if you take the par value, which is, if you take, and write this down, this is important. If you take th the par value times the number of shares, number of shares, that's gonna give you the account called common stock. For our example here, if we take 92,556, 295 times point zero 0.01, it's gonna give us this number 925,563 rounded. Okay, so this is what you need to know. The number of shares, and I'm going to talk about this in a moment. Number of shares, number of shares times the par value gives us common stock. This number here, this number common stock, which we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to talk about this uh, quite a bit in a moment. So this is the balance sheet for Johnson & Johnson. Let's look at their shareholders equity. Let's look at their common stock. The par value is a dollar. They have authorized shares 4.32 billion, 4.32, issued an outstanding 3.119 billion. Okay, and notice if we take the number of shares issued, notice if we take the number of shares issued times the par value, it's going to give us this number common stock. Also here, let's look at Netflix just for the sake of illustration. And notice here the par value is not 0.01, it's 0 0.001. So what is the par value? You're going to see the par value is an arbitrary amount assigned to the stock. Oh, sorry, it's this one. This is the common stock, 0 0.001. They have 4.99 billion shares authorized. 
and of which 436 million issued. So just give you an idea that the par value could be anything. Now, what is the par value? There we go. The par value is an arbitrary amount. Notice in one example for Johnson & Johnson, the par value was a dollar. And another example for Netflix was 0 0.001. So the par value could be any amount. It could be assigned to the stock. And we'll see in a moment that also a company, they could have no par value. They could have a stock and they don't want to have a par value for it. Okay, so you, you, you don't have to have a par value. But if you do have a par value, you're going to see how we will be using the par value. So it's an arbitrary amount to assign to, to a stock when it's authorized. It's different than the market price. What is the market price? The market price is how much the stock is selling at. For example, Johnson & Johnson could be selling right now for $123 or $125. I don't know the the amount is. I should because my wife works there, but that's beside the point. So the par value is an arbitrary amount to the, to the uh, arbitrary amount assigned to the stock. We really don't worry about the market price. Just the market price changes every day. So we have stocks with par value, stocks with no par value. In inserting state, we have stocks that has rather than a par value, they have something called the stated value. Par value, basically the same as the stated value. It's an arbitrary amount assigned to the stock basically the same thing. Now, the stockholders equity section of the corporation consists of two main components, one and two. And you need to understand what, those, what these two components are. The first component, they go by different name in the real world, but I'm just going to have to explain it to you. It's called paid in capital. This is the amount, paid in capital. That's the amount that's contributed by who? Contributed by the stockholders. Remember, the stockholder owns the company. All the money that the stockholders contribute, money or other assets, usually money, it's it's parked in, into the paid in capital. So cash and other assets received in exchange for stocks. Received from whom? From the stockholders. Then we have another account. And those are, to be more specific, those are, these are the two main accounts the two accounts that represent the largest component of equity. Paid in capital is one. Two is retained earning. What is retained earning? Retained earning is a cumulative account. What is a cumulative? It means it accumulates over the years. So this is retained earnings. And retained earnings will have a credit balance. Every time we have net income, retained earning goes up. Every time we have a net loss, retained earning goes down. Every time we pay dividend, retained earning goes down. So this is down, down, and this is plus. Those are the three main things that affect retained earning. Is there other things that affects retained earning? Yes, we'll see later on. There are other, other transactions that affects retained er earnings, but those are the three main accounts. So retained earning is accumulative. It, in other words, it's the balance stays from year to year, from year to year. When we have net income, it goes up. When we have net loss, it goes down. When we have dividend, it goes down. So let's take a look at Johnson & Johnson uh, balance sheet again. Notice common stock and retained earnings represent the largest component of shareholders' equity. Now, you may not understand shareholders' equity here. You may say, how come 110 plus, 110 plus 3,000, we end up with 59? It's because we have treasury stock. Treasury stock gets subtracted, so this number is less. So that's why, you know, the, the, the number equal to 59, okay? But usually the largest two components are retained earnings and common stock, what the owner invested and common stock. Let's take a look at uh, Netflix, the same thing. Common stock and retained earnings. Those are the two largest component of stockholders' equity, okay? We have other accounts. We have accumulated other comprehensive loss. It could be accumulated other comprehensive gain. We could have treasury stock, but the other accounts are minor. Not that we don't talk about them in financial accounting. We discuss them more in intermediate accounting. Let's take a look at few transactions in common stock to see how common stock comes to life and how is it presented on the financial statements. On June 5th, Dillon Inc. issued. Issued means sold. Okay, so what happened is the corporation sell stocks and they receive in return cash. So this is the company. They sell stocks and those are the investors. The investor gets the stocks and the company gets the cash. So Dylan 
issued, sold 30,000 shares. The par value for this stock is $10 and received $300,000. let us record this transaction. You have to understand that if we received $300,000 in cash, we are going to debit cash $300,000. Since we issue common stock, we have, we're going to have to credit common stock. How much do we credit common stock? Write this down. This is an important computation. Let me just write common stock again. Write this down. Common stock is, I told you this before, but let me write it again. Number of shares times the par value. In this example, the number of shares are 30,000. The par value is $10, happens to be 300,000. Therefore, the entry is debit cash. 300,000 credit common stock 300,000. Let's look at another transaction. On June 5th, Dylan Snowboards issued, means sold, 30,000 shares, $10 par value for $12 each. So now they sold, <coughs> sorry, 30,000 shares times $12. That's going to give them cash 360,000. Therefore, they debit cash. 360,000. They issued common stock. Therefore, we have to credit common stock. How much do we credit common stock? Well, simple. The number of shares times the par value. That's 300,000. Now we have 60,000 remaining. What do we credit for the 60,000? We credit an account called paid in capital. It's the money contributed from the investors in access of par value common stock. It means we received $60,000 in excess to the par value. Simply put, if you really want to think about it, those two accounts are the same. It's the money invested by the investors. Okay? They, the investors gave us $360,000. $300,000, it's under common stock, and the remaining is under the remaining 60,000 is under paid in capital in excess of par value, 360. Now on the balance sheet, this is how we show things. We have common stock of 300,000, $10 par value, 50,000 shares authorized for this company of which 30,000 are issued. Notice 30,000 issued times $10 will give you 300,000, paid in capital is 60, and we have retained earning of 65,000. This is how things are presented on the balance sheet. Let's assume we issued a no par value stock. It means there is no par. Remember, sometimes we have stocks with no par. The company decides not to have a par. On June 5th, Dylan Snowboard issued 1,000 shares, no par value for $40. Well, we sold 1,000 shares at $40. That's $40,000 in cash. Credit common stock, $40,000. In other words, we have no paid in capital in excess of par. Why not? We have no par. So you, you cannot have access of par if you have no par. So it's, it's, it's simple, no par value. Let's assume the problem read. June 5th, we issued 1,000 shares of $40 stated value for $50. Remember, when you hear the word stated value, it's the same thing as par value. So stated value, same as par, same as par. What does that mean? It means you take 1,000. It means you take a thousand dollar, thousand shares. I'm sorry, times forty dollars. Therefore, you debit cash, or uh, one thousand times fifty, for cash. Common stock is forty dollars times a thousand, which is forty thousand. And anything in excess, which is ten thousand, it's called paid in capital in excess of stated value. It's the same thing as. Let me take. Let me show you here. It's the same thing as this example, except we use the term here, par value, in excess of par value. In this example, we use the term in excess of stated value. In other words, the stated value and the par value are the same thing. Now, we could also issue stocks for non-cash. What does that mean? It means we want to buy something. We have no cash. But what we tell the seller, if they're willing to accept stocks. Let's take a look at an example. On June 10th, 4,000 shares of $20 par value stock exchange for land valued at 105. What we did now, we gave 4,000 shares. In return, we got a land that's worth 105. How do we record this transaction? Well, we received the land 
we know the value of the land is 105. We issued 4,000 shares with a par value of 20. Well, 4,000 times 20 is 80,000. Therefore, we credit common stock, 80,000. The remaining is 25,000. What do we call this number? Paid in capital in excess of par. Okay, so this is the basically issuing stock to buy an assets. I'm sorry, to buy an asset, issuing stocks for non-cash, for something other than cash. Let's take a look at another example. We issued 600 shares of $15 par value for 12,000 of organ organizing work. Uh, what is organizing work? Usually that means uh, when we incorporate, when we incorporate, what happened is we, uh, we pay we pay someone we pay someone um to help us incorporate like lawyers accountant and consultant before we start the company we call this or organizing work or organizational cost in other words it's an it's an expense so now what happened is we owe them twelve thousand. we don't have we don't have the money to pay them so what we did is we gave them 600 shares with a par value of 15 dollars. well what's going to happen is we're going to debit organization expense twelve thousand dollars so what we're doing here is we're issuing stocks for expense rather rather that rather than an asset we're issuing the stock for expense now we credit common stock how much do we credit common stock well we credit common stock for 600 shares times 15 600 times 15 and that's going to give us nine thousand dollar and that's going to keep us for three thousand it's called paid in capital in excess of par value, par value, and to be more specific, common stock. So this is the entry. So notice we can issue stocks for cash. That's that's usually what happens. Something like this. We issue stocks for cash, okay? Or like this, we issue stocks for cash, or we can issue stocks for other asset we issue stocks for other assets or we can issue stocks for let me just delete everything here so you can see it we issue stocks for expenses so notice we can issue stocks for many other things and sometimes we could issue stocks you will see later on in intermediate accounting for liability so if we, if we cannot pay off the, the loan we issue the stock and we pay off the loan if you like this recording please click on the like button you could visit my website for additional resources especially if you're studying for your cpa exam and if you would like to supplement your accounting education you're going to invest once for your cpa it's a lifetime investment take it seriously invest study hard in the next session we would look at cash dividend study hard stay safe and good luck